Hello everyone, welcome to a review of this, a Mercedes C-Class. So this edition ran from 2007 all the way to about 2014. So I have actually got one of the earlier examples, this 07 plate. This is a 1.8 compressor. This is the C200 and in elegant spec, so it's near the top of the range. So it has some goodies in there. But first of all, let's look at the design. What do you think? It is quite nice actually. A little bit conservative mind, but... It has a certain elegance to it, doesn't it? And that's exactly what it's intended for. It is intended for the more mature drivers, middle-aged drivers who are looking for something that is nice and elegant and comfortable that they wouldn't look out of place going anywhere. Whether it be to the supermarket or a five-star hotel, you can turn up and not look out of place with something like this. So it's got a nice presence to it. It's not aggressively styled like you would see on an equivalent BMW, but then the BMWs and this Mercedes C-Class, although they're executive cars, they go for different parts of the market. So the B Beamer obviously is going for the ones that want a little bit more of a sporty ride and dynamic ride uh, driving style, whereas with this, you buy this because you want something really ultra comfortable that's a motorway cruncher and will look good at the same time without looking too loutish you know you want the uh, executive elegance without looking too boy ratio is and this is the one and of course that three-pointed star you can never never fall out of love with that can you well i love it myself and i'm a bmw fanboy myself i must admit but there you go so she looks lovely shall we see how she drives so sh she pulls off really nice nice and comfy hardly any road noise whatsoever you are so insulated in here the steering is very good and light it's not as direct as say the uh, bmw but it is pretty good in itself has good feel to it got excellent visibility all round and of course it's nice and comfortable in here with lovely ambience in the interior overall you are very close to the windscreen though it's an old school design harping back to the old days eh but isn't that nice look the three-pointed star just makes you smile doesn't it and the braking is nice and sharp and this being the 1.8 is nice and peppy I would say it's the pick of the range really so if you were going for something that's a blend of economy and power and low maintenance relatively low maintenance for an executive car this is the one to go for yeah and avoid the diesel really because of you les diesel is actually very grunty and reliable but a bit rattly whereas this is nice and quiet and the delivery of power is so nice and smooth it is so comfortable in here and it's just wafts you along really wafts you along without throwing you back on your seat but it is superb comfort is the key of this one let's go for the final review so there you have it as described on the tin lovely nice comfortable smooth driver nice soft compliant suspension a to b no fuss in elegance so we look at the uh, interior i didn't look at the interior first so if we look at the interior in terms of practicality you get two adults in in comfort three at a squeeze because you've got a huge hump there in keeping with the other cars in this class so it's not uncommon really and obviously the leg room is not great headroom is okay uh, for children you can get three children in here fantastically easily uh, you've got the door that's opened quite wide actually so you can get the two baby seats in here very easily and with the windows being relatively big the kids will look out there not feel sick or get annoyed and they've got a nice view out 
and like I said the suspension is lovely so it's going to be nice and cosseting and the car is very well insulated and generally my advice is I don't actually like the faux leather I don't like the leather seats I prefer the uh, cloth seats they're a lot more comfortable and compliant whereas these they're a little bit slippery and in the summer I get really hot and uh, one other thing is that the bolsters aren't the longest in the world so if you're a six foot adult or anyone like even me at five foot six the under thigh support isn't great but because it's angled a little bit like that inwards can you see it's angled inwards you get a little bit more support so it is that little bit more comfortable uh, longer term but in longer journeys but it's no no comparison to the uh, Lexus IS250 the IS250 wins it hands down but this comes a close second it's far more comfortable than uh, say the 3 Series or the Audi I would say in my opinion the Audi the suspension is a bit too uh, uh, what do you call it it's not firm but it's unsteady on motorway speeds and on uh, rough terrain so as you can see one of the downsides of the faux lever and common issue there you are cracks on the seats etc and that's why I don't like it and to be fair I don't know why Mercedes do this and they've continued it to current day they scrimp on the quality of the faux leather you buying a Mercedes come on now but what can you do this is the way of the world they save money on this but they don't reduce the price do they oh well having said that the rest of the interior though the quality you cannot fault it nice quality soft touch plastics everywhere and then these lovely wood inlays on this elegant spec you don't get it on the lower ones though but all the switch gear is oh look at that the car is 14 15 years old and it still feels nice and solid all the buttons are of the highest quality so in that sense other than the poor quality of the seats uh, materials for the faux leather the rest of it is just absolutely brilliant look the buttons the steering wheel all of the highest order and of course it's a lovely nice elegant place to sit in terms of reliability well it's on a par with other German makes um, it's not as reliable as the Lexus but it's on a par with the 3 Series and the Audi and really uh, in terms of cost and maintaining it it's about the same uh, so it takes a choice really so this one's more for those people that want something that's comfortable and an easy cruiser if you want sporty dynamics then go for the 3 series uh, things to watch out for on these cars obviously look out for any electrical glitches usually you've got like, mirrors not working or at this age you do get some of the sensors under the bonnet not working so you get EML lights coming on and things like that but that's more to do with lack of maintenance usually these cars if they're maintained and hence why if you buy these only buy them where they've had maybe two owners three owners max with full service history so this one has comprehensive history and only two owners and the last owners had it for 13 years that's why i got it otherwise i wouldn't have touched it with a barge pole because it's just too risky with the electrical issues because once these get electrical glitches i'm telling you it becomes a money pit but otherwise if they've been maintained the engine is solid the gearbox is okay it's not fantastic but otherwise it's uh good it's pretty good for the class so I wouldn't criticize it in particular for that but do watch out for the gearbox and the one way to do that is just warm up the car go through the gears and make sure there's no clunking and of course if you go for a drive it will be plainly obvious because it will just like um, rev through the range and skip gears etc so it'll be quite offer, um, obvious and of course at this age and mileage look out for any leakages in the engine bay on the rocker covers but those aren't really major those are minor things that can be easily rectified so overall do i recommend this car well yeah if you're after a nice comfortable cruiser yeah why not but is it best in class which one do i go for well for me you know my personal favorite is the lexus is250 so my review is based on if you've got three four grand to spend so that will get you like a 2007 high mileage mercedes like this or a three series or an audi and of course the is250 now if i in terms of where i put my money always on the lexus the lexus uh, matches this for in terms of elegance it has far better quality interior and the ride is as if not better than this 
the only thing it falls down on is not as sporty uh, engaging drive as the 3 Series but overall number one is the less SIS 250 in terms of maintenance and reliability as well to boot and number two is this the Mercedes C-Class I would go for this if I can't get the Lexus and then closely followed by the BMW and I wouldn't really get the Audi I'm not a good big fan of the Audi especially when we're looking at automatics the Audi automatics are absolutely horrendous avoid them like the plague or Covid whichever one uh, is most relevant to you these days but yeah lovely car just the Lexus is a little bit better I hope that helped everyone like and subscribe and see you in the next one bye bye